Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, why did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and give, go and visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. When did we see you hungry or thirsty or, or a stranger or uh, needing clothes or sick in prison? And did not help you. And he will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. If God judges us on certain things, then by default those are the most important things in life. And and if it's coming from God who is perfect and created life in the first place then those things also bring the most meaning you could possibly have to your life. They will bring the most purpose. I'm going to go a little mathematical and you're going to set up a little diagram and it goes along with a series of, I call it a diagram of life, a diagram of judgment. Because life and judgment uh, are so synonymous. Uh, defining them as points in here, what I'm getting at in my little diagram is this, is that when we talk about the spiritual, I'm talking about those the, the inner life. I'm talking about the things that the, the qualities of God that are in you, or maybe not in you. We're talking about the things that you don't really see, the, the intangible things. I look at Carol here. I, I can't look at Carol and say, okay, there's God in there. I can I can see into her soul and say, uh, you know, God's presence, that inner life is there. But I can't necessarily see it directly. I have to depend on the material side of things, the, the, the outer life. I have to depend on seeing uh, what actions does she take, what reactions does she have to things. Is sometimes the needs, if we're talking about navigating the needs of humanity, sometimes they're near, but sometimes they're far away. And God has this way of, of, of maybe not so much distinguishing, but there is a balance there as well. So uh, I would propose to you a, a second set of points on which uh, all how we navigate the needs in our Christian walk are with this too. Now close and distant can deal with a, a number of issues, a number of things. For instance, we could be talking about focus. I'm always just thinking about what's happening right here, right now. That's all I'm about. Or I never think about it. I'm always thinking about you know people I never see. Or we could be talking perspective. The world ends at this wall, at these walls. You know, we've had people and basically that was their Christian faith. They said, what happens inside these walls is Christianity. Everything else is just out there. And you see theologies on there. And the reason theology is there is because all these things set up, theology means your study, your understanding of God. Now, if all my concern and all my reaction and all my perspective is small, you know what? I've got a small God. I just, I just have by default. But on the other hand, if everything were on the other extreme and that God's working everywhere else, then God is very distant from me. Oh, I believe there's God, but he's out there doing stuff, but he's doing it somewhere else and not for me. So here we are on the sliding perspective of things. And somewhere and there's a sweet spot because God is far away and he's doing things you know nothing about. And he is doing things in here. He's doing both, so there's a balance to be had. Understanding God works close and far, and he works up there and he works down here. We end up with a, a kind of a, a graph here where those lines intersect. Here is the proposal, is that when we hit the mark, it, it's where the balance is, it's in the center. Now, the mark was a term that I thought was great to use because we also have another Christian term, don't we? Uh, and it's defined as missing the mark. What is missing the mark? Sin. Missing the mark is a definition for sin. And if God's talking to Christians here, he's talking to, well, he's talking to professing God people, he's saying there is a mark to be hit, and we will be judged on how we do with that mark. But there's a lot of ways to miss the mark. Now, just going back to the basic geometry, you can see, in fact, it's implied. 
there's a range that we can go, there's a million missing the marks up there and only one hitting the mark. How do we know? Where do we get with that sweet spot? What does the mark really mean? And well, it means that to hit the mark is to be right with God. To hit the mark is to be right with God. To hit the mark means doing life in, in the way it was meant to be done. Your life will have the most possible meaning and purpose that it possibly can and fulfillment. It all ties into how we balance and hitting the mark.